you're eventually going to be breathing through your nose and you're in an environment where there's smoke there. So it's going to get in that way. But a lot of times people don't realize that when you're breathing through your mouth, some of those chemicals kind of hang out in the back of your throat and you get retro kind of breathing uh, of, of the smoke. So it goes into the back of your throat and it actually goes from the back up into your nose and sinuses um, above your soft palate. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of one of the ways. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NJENT's podcast called We Knows Noses. I'm Dr. Reddy. I'm joined by my partner, Dr. Andavia today. And we will be discussing a topic today that a lot of patients have questions about, and that is regarding smoking and vaping and how does that affect your nose and sinus health. Um, so maybe Dr. Andavia, maybe you can give a little bit of background on this. Well, what, what is, what is the problem with smoking? Um, in general, first, just from a, like a physiologic perspective, smoking is bad for many reasons, but the reason that we're talking about is that smoking produces something called carbon monoxide and carbon monoxide binds to red blood cells in the same place where oxygen should bind to blood cells, but it does so in a way that's irreversible. So. If you are no, normally taking a breath of air in, oxygen goes and attaches to the red blood cell, and then the red blood cell delivers that oxygen to wherever it is needed. However, if you smoke cigarettes or vape, the carbon monoxide is attaching to those same red blood cells. They go to the area where the oxygen is needed, but it cannot deliver oxygen. It can't even release the carbon monoxide. So now that red blood cell permanently has carbon monoxide on. So you've taken effectively taken the amount of oxygen that's still required for your cells and decreased the delivery of oxygen to your cells. And so every red blood cell turns over on itself every uh, every ninety degree uh, every ninety days. So new new red blood cells are always being produced, and they last about ninety days. So in order to get rid of that red blood cell, it takes ninety days. Um, smoking also does a lot of stuff to our sinuses. Um, I'll talk about some of them. So so sure. it it acts as an irritant to some of the lining. So your nose normally makes a lot of mucus and you have lots of little hair cells inside your nose called cilia. And the mucus is cleared out by this by the cilia. So your nose makes the mucus and then it sweeps it out. And that's really a cleaning function, right? The mucus attaches to any debris, any irritants in the in the air. It takes them and it removes them from the nose. But the smoking irritates those cilia and then they can't sweep the mucus out. So the mucus ends up staying there under your nose and patients sometimes get a little bit stuffy because of it. They actually get more sick because of it. Allergens might hang out in their nose more often. Um, it's generally a very uncomfortable feeling. P patients often come to the office saying they're, they're always getting sick in their nose. Well, part of the reason might be that it's just because they're smoking. It's not because they're exposed to any more sickness than any of us are, but it's just because what they are exposed to hangs out in their nose for longer. Sure. And vaping um, is also potentially equally, or maybe in some cases, maybe more irritating to the nose and sinuses than traditional smoking is. You know, with traditional smoking, you're burning the tobacco and you get a lot of irritants from a lot of the extra chemicals and extra part of the um, cigarette that's being burned. With vaping, you get a higher concentration of the nicotine and maybe less of those other irritants, but the nicotine itself can be harmful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some a practical question I get sometimes asked from patients is, you know, if I'm smoking through my mouth, why is my nose and sinus affected? Mm -hmm. Right? You're not, like, you're not necessarily inhaling the smoke directly yeah. through your nose and sinuses. And the reason for that is one, I mean, you're eventually going to be breathing through your nose and you're in an environment where there's smoke there. So it's going to get in that way. But a lot of times people don't realize that when you're breathing through your mouth, some of those chemicals kind of hang out in the back of your throat and you get retro kind of breathing uh, of, of the smoke. So it goes into the back of your throat and it actually goes from the back up into your nose and sinuses um, above your soft palate. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of one of the ways. But also nicotine affects some of the microvasculature in the entire head and neck. Mm -hmm. 
So the entire head and necks, the little blood vessels in your in your um in your head and neck called the capillary systems, which are the smaller branches of your arteries and arterial arterioles, those can get partially blocked. Mm -hmm. And and when those get partially blocked, the nose and sinuses um may not be able to withstand like allergens and viruses as, as easily because the nose and sinuses aren't able to fight those insults easier um, because of the disruption of those blood vessels. Yep, they're not delivering all the, the cells that help you fight those infections right. and sweep away those allergens. What Can you comment on patients that are going to get nose and sinus surgery or even head and neck surgery um, how smoking or vaping can affect their healing process. Yeah. So for the for the very basic reason that Dr. Reddy just said, blood flow is altered when you smoke um, and when you vape, your healing process will definitely be slower. And there may be little nuances that we can't necessarily predict, but we could chuck up to smoking. Um, but you, uh, I definitely notice that our patients uh, who smoke for for uh, before and after sinus surgery, have a lot more crusting. There's a lot more stuffy afterwards. There's more swelling for the rhinoplasty patients. Um, you get like this stippling inside, so it looks like the cells aren't as healthy. Like it, it just looks different. Um, the nose on the outside for our rhinoplasty patients looks a little bit more red. Um, actually won't even do a facelift on a patient that smokes because there's such a high likelihood of the complication with it that we can't we we can't safely do that if somebody's smoking um the question becomes like when do you do you try and counsel them to stop before and when do you because the red blood cell is already attached to that um, carbon monoxide yeah there's no right or wrong answer i think the longer that you can quit smoking prior to the procedure the better mm -hmm. i would say minimum two months and even if you can't stop smoking and you're able to cut back significantly, that I think that still makes a huge improvement. It does. And I think if if they can switch to um, like a, not necessarily smoking cigarettes, but chewing the gum with tobacco, with nicotine in it, yep. that can be very helpful as well. And bridge the gap um, and then have them see a doctor about Chantix or something. Yep. From quitting perspective. Great. Anything else to add? No, I think um, don't smoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, that's all we have for today's episode. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Bye. Bye.